Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Chem 170 with your host, me, Dr. White. Hi, everybody. Due to technical difficulties uh, at the original meeting, I'm recording this again so I can actually post the video. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. White. I'm an organic chemist. Now, if you've heard organic chemistry is real hard and nasty, that's not true. It's fun. But then again, I'm biased. I'm an organic chemist. All right. First of all, this semester, you'll be watching videos of me giving lectures. Now, in the past, I have been giving face-to-face -face live lectures on Zoom, along with recording and posting these lectures on my Chem 170 YouTube channel. And because of many reasons, students couldn't come to the lectures, and most of the students were just watching the video. This last summer, I did an experiment where I didn't do a live lectures and record it and post it, and just had some uh, office hours, my office hours, and also live reviews for each test. And because of that, the students, all of them were just watching the videos, and they did really good. Just like in the past when I would do it live on Zoom or face-to-face -face in a classroom. So this semester, you will be watching videos on my video channel. And I'll be talking about that in a little while. Now, a couple of things. First of all, this semester, both live and through my videos, you'll learn a lot about me. And the first thing I should tell you is I'm an organic chemist. I've had many decades of experience working in the chemical industry as a senior research and development manager. Also, because about 2001, our research and development jobs in chemistry left the Chicagoland area really bad. I've been teaching at ECC. And since 2007, Oh, wow, that's a long time ago. I've been teaching Chem 170 at ECC. I also teach at College of DuPage, COD. And there I've taught the equivalent to Chem 170. It's called Chem 1212 for many years. And I also teach general chemistry there. And it's been a while, but I have taught general chemistry at ECC. Now, like I said, during this semester, in my videos, and also live, you'll learn a lot about me. And the first thing is you don't see them because I'm not wearing them or my hearing aids. Why am I not wearing them? Because up above, I have two big amplified speakers. So why am I telling you this? Because even with the amplified speakers, if you talk softly, if you're ever asking questions to me on Zoom meeting, or if you have an accent, or if you talk softly with an accent, I might have a trouble hearing you. And because of that, I may ask you to repeat something once or twice. That's my problem, not yours, but please work with me on that. <clears throat> now, the other thing that's probably the most important thing I'll teach you tonight or talk about tonight, excuse me, is that in my class, in my world, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I'll say that again. In my class, in my world, there's no such thing as a dumb question. If you have a question about anything Chem 170, ask. Ask by email, come to my office hours, and I'll talk more about that, and ask questions and I'll help you. Another thing about myself you'll learn or you'll see in the videos, I'm a very selfish person in one aspect. And that is, I like to have good things happen to me because it makes me happy. I'm very selfish that way. And one of the things that I consider a good thing that makes me happy is seeing su students succeed and getting good grades in my class. I get no pleasure giving C's, D's, or F's. It really doesn't make me feel good or it makes me actually unhappy. So... I will be teaching you tonight some tips on how to do well in my class. Now, historically, 
my students, if they follow my advice and put in the time, usually 60 to 70% of the class, listen carefully, earn A's, yes. And the majority of the rest get B's. But you have to study, you have to do what I'll recommend. All right. So remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question in my class. Now, since it's going to be online, you will be using what we call desire to learn, which you see on your screen right now. Let me check to make sure. And the answer is yes. I have to keep make sure because sometimes Zoom makes you think you have something on the screen. It isn't. Now, this is Desire to Learn, the, also known as D2L. Now, I should warn you, once in a while, I'll say Blackboard. At COD, their computer system for students and faculty, it's called Blackboard. At ECC, it's D2L. Now, if you notice here, there are a number of things here. And in the opening page, you'll see my name, my office hours, the link to that, password if you need it, if you want to call in, and also importantly, my email address. Now, it's kwhite at elgin.edu. When I send an email out to the whole class via D2L, it has a different email address, which I never see those if you respond to that. If you're going to email me, email kwhite at elgin.edu. Now, I'm going to be doing something while I'm talking to you, an introduction, and I'll explain later on why I'm doing that. So what am I going to do? On the whiteboard, I'm going to write down propane. And propane is an organic molecule that has this structure, CH3, CH2, CH3, propane. And propane is the stuff you buy in the white bottles for your barbecue. And I'm going to be probably setting the Guinness Book of World Record for saying propane and writing the structure out the most times in the next 30 minutes. And afterward, I'll explain why I've done that. Now, if you go back to D2L, you'll see you have contents. I don't have anything, discussions, assignments. I don't use quizzes, the grades. You have a little different. This is my interface. And then other stuff. Now, let's look at content. On the content, you'll see I have a folder called syllabus. Another the Zoom meeting logins. Let me get this off the screen. Lectures, the lectures are my lecture slides that I use in the Zoom meeting videos you'll be watching, a link to my YouTube channel, my YouTube channel video schedule, which is also in the syllabus, learning modules, and very important, practice problems and practice problem answers. And I'll talk more, I have a section how to create a PDF file of a test or a lab with your cell phone and how to upload it. Later on, I'll talk later in the semester, like week 12 or 13, I'll talk about the extra credit project. And I also have here a link to my favorite music, movies, and books. I found out a number of years ago that because if you notice, I'm a little older than you, big generation gap, a lot of my students didn't know about the good things in life, like good music, like Jimi Hendrix, my claim to fame in high school. I actually here in Chicago and saw Jimi Hendrix live, the only concert he ever did in Chicago. Oh, was that the best concert I've ever been in? And I've been in Moody Blues, uh, Jefferson Airplane, Iron Butterfly, I keep on going, but that was the best. All right. Now, important problem with D2L, which is an older software. Here I've clicked on the lecture right here, and you see 
for chapter two, the slides I use in my video for Al Kane's. I have it both as a Word document and a PDF file. And I also have other important files. Now, if we scroll down to the bottom, you see right after chapter 11 and 13, amines, amides, and heterocyclic compounds, it says load more. On a couple of these, why they don't have the whole thing, it's an older software. And if you click on the load more, you'll see more slides for the different chapters. So don't forget, and I also, before each test, I'll do a review, and here are the slides for my reviews for tests one, two, three, and four. So I just wanted to warn you about that load four button. Now, if you click on syllabus, you'll see I have my syllabus for this semester as both a Word document and a PDF file. And I also have something called signature sheet and both in Word document and PDF, uh, uh, PDF document or file. So what I'd like to do now is go through the syllabus. It's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it's important. And right now on your screen, you should see the syllabus, which D2L, I mean, Zoom tells me you are. So let's go through it. First of all, here's my email again. Here's a phone. Now, this is a voicemail box. And I think the last time I checked it was maybe five, 10 years ago. Don't call me there. If you need to call the division office, ask the secretary, uh, Vicki Bethke, have her contact me. But the best way is email. Now, all the lectures and labs will be on video and the YouTube channel. And in a little while, I'll show you the schedule for that. Our, uh, my office hours on Zoom are Monday and Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Here again is the link and other ways you can dial in. Now, as I said earlier, I like students to do well in my class. If you can't make it to my Zoom meeting office hours and you need help, one, you can always email me with questions. I check my email twice a day, every day of the week, Monday through Sunday. Now I get up early and I mean early, I've been doing that all my life since I can remember. Like when I was seven or eight, I was getting up early and I go to bed late. So when I say I check my email twice, usually the morning email is checked by 6.30, 7 a.m., sometimes earlier, later in the afternoon or early evening, I'll check it again. Sometimes I might even check it three times, but I guarantee I check my email twice a day, every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday. And if you can't make it to my office hour or you need more help than just an email, email me and we'll set up a private meeting through Zoom. The nice thing is, when we were face-to-face, -face, when I taught Chem 170 at ECC, I'd be there on Monday and Wednesday, and I'd get there a half hour early before my class started. My office hours would be right after. And after that, I wasn't on campus. But now with Zoom, if you need help, we can always get together. And like I said, the best way to reach me is by email. Here I say I check it yearly. It's more like decadely. I think it's been at least 10 years since I checked it. All right. Now, there are certain things I'm required, not only I, but all faculty, to put in the syllabus. I'll let you read that at your own leisure. The active course file is right here. Course description is right here. My YouTube videos, I'll talk about that on page 16, but I will tell you 
exams come from the material covered in YouTube videos. And everything I cover in class is not adequately always covered in a textbook. Actually, I made a textbook optional because a number of years ago, I asked about two thirds through the semester, this is when we were face to face, how many people are reading the book? And nobody raised their hand. And at first I was concerned until I saw the grade students were doing, which were quite good, very good. I think that class, 75% of the class, of a big class earned A's and the rest I think earned B's. I might've had one C and they weren't reading the book. Why? Because my lectures and I'll be talking about it, my practice problems that I do in class, which I'll be uh, doing in the videos and I have for you to work on, help students learn organic chemistry and do really good on my test. So let me emphasize this semester, you need to watch those videos. If you want to succeed, meaning get a good grade in my class. And I have a schedule. You're not going to learn and do organic chemistry the night before, two nights before a test and do well. You have to keep up. Well, you don't have to, but if you want a good grade, and I want you to get a good grade, because if you get a good grade, I get what I want. You've learned organic chemistry. It's critical to watch these videos. Now, all faculty starting this semester have to add the academic integrity. I'll let you read that. Behavior policy, we're on, it's all online asynchronous, so you don't really have to read this other than the part about cheating. And I'll talk more about that before the first test. And same thing, emergency closing information, all faculty have to put that in there. And here I've made the purchase of the textbook. Let me get it. Here's the textbook. I think I got the newest edition. And this is organic chemistry, a short course. And I have a couple extra copies. When we were face to face, I loaned it to students. And guess what? About two weeks later, they'd bring it back and say, Well, we are looking at the book. Well, I'm sorry, at the book, but your lectures are quite good in the practice problems. We don't need the book. And they did quite well in my class. If you look at ratemyprofessor.com, especially if you scroll down a couple of years ago, you'll see students saying you don't need to buy the book, and you don't. Oh, quick thing, I got my PhD from Michigan State University, and Dr. Hart, this Hart, that's his son, was when I was there, and I don't know if he's still alive or not, this is a long time ago, a very famous organic chemist, not just because of his book, but because of his research. And when I used to, my, uh, the group I belonged to, our labs were right across from Dr. Hart's office and labs. And I'd see him and I'd say, Doctor, good morning, Dr. Hart. And he was pretty aloof person and usually didn't talk to grad students. And I kept doing that. And after about two or three weeks, he said, good morning to me back. And other grad students happened to be in a hall and saw that. We're quite amazed because he usually doesn't talk to that. But he was, he was a nice guy, really great professor. So is mine, Dr. Roosh, who was my PhD advisor at Michigan State. What a great experience that was in my life. And because of I will be always grateful to Dr. Roosh, because under his guidance, I became a really good synthetic organic chemist. By the way, my PhD is in synthetic organic chemistry, synthetic is a fancy word meaning to make. My training is to make organic molecules. And having worked in the chemical industry for many decades, I have a number, yes, of US patents. And I've created or created, invented is better word, a number of molecules that are still being sold today.
Now, important thing, if you are a special needs student, please contact me in private. Since day one, I've been at ECC and also at COD, I've always supported the needs of any special needs student. Whatever you need, let me know and I'll help you as any way I can. All right, now, starting this semester, all faculty now have to include the following resources. I'll let you read that at your leisure. All right, let's get the important part, which you are interested because you're a student. And by the way, long, long time ago, a really long time ago, I was a student too. First, I got my bachelor's degree from Illinois Institute, Illinois Institute of Technology, IIT. Then, like I said, I got my PhD at Michigan State and I had to take a lot of tests. So how do you get a grade in this class? First of all, there'll be four, four tests. Here are the tentative days. I will be posting the test as a password protected PDF file in the assignment area a couple days before the test. On that date, like the 9-13 date, at 8 a.m., I will mail out an email with the password, time out for a water break, with the password that will allow you to open that PDF file. And you'll have until the next day, because some of you might be working then, to take the test and upload your answers as a PDF file. Now I'll talk more about it later on, that I have files that teach you how to use your cell phone if you don't have a scanner to make a PDF file you can upload. Also, if your printer is broken or you don't have access to a printer, you can write the answers out on a piece of paper. You don't have to write the questions and you can take a picture or scan it and upload that as a PDF file. Now I'll talk more about test regrading, but if I ever make a mistake in grading, let me know, I'll check it. And if I have made a mistake, I'll correct it because no student should ever be penalized for mistake I make. No, that's not right. Now, on Monday, the 12th, 11th of December, I'll be giving a comprehensive two hour final and it'll be the same thing. You'll download the test at that morning on 8 a.m. I'll have send out an email with a password for the password protected PDF file of the final and you'll have until the next day afternoon, I think one or two for 3 p.m. to take the final and upload it as a PDF file. Now, relax. I've been teaching a long time and on my final, usually students do quite well, which makes me happy. But my class, if you do what I recommend, and I'll be talking about that in a while, I will guarantee you'll do well in this class, which means I just forgot I should be writing down and saying propane, propane. And that's CH3, CH2, CH3, propane. And that's the molecule used in your barbecue or used to create the heat for your barbecue. If you have one, gas barbecue. Now, during the semester, there'll be extra credit, one project, and that's usually about week 14 or 13, I'll talk about that. Now, makeup policy, if there's an extreme emergency, I will allow you to make up a test or hand it in late but you have to document it somehow, either a doctor's letter or something like that. I've had students, unfortunately, in the last couple of years have come down with COVID or people in their family have, and I let them take tests late. Now, how do you get a grade in this class? 
Now, you're going to be taking four exams or tests, and each one is 100 points. And I will take the scores from the three highest test scores of the four. And I will have to re correct that. That should be 632. And the final exam will be worth 200 points. Relax, students do good on that. They do good in my class too. And then you'll be doing lab reports. Each one are 11, we'll have 13. The lowest one I drop, so I do 12 of those at 11. That's 132 points. Now, before I go into percentage, because I've been amiss, let's do propane again. Propane, CH3, CH2, CH3, propane, and that's an organic molecule. Now, the percentage is calculated, and let me make it a little bigger so you can see it. The sum of the three highest tests, your final exam points, your lab total, and if uh, you do, and it's optional, the extra credit, multiply that by 100, divide by 632, and you'll get a percentage. And if your percentage is 90 or higher, you'll get an A. 80 to 89 B, 70 to 79 C, 66 to 69 D, 59 or less F. And as I've said, historically, Students who follow what I'll be teaching you how to do well in this class, usually I get about 65, 70% of the class, yeah, that high, earning A's, and usually the remainder B's, maybe some C once in a while. And I've unfortunately have had students who got D's and F, which makes me very sad, but there's only so much I can do. You have to do some work too. Now, for the test, I will, after each test, send you a, each of you an email with the points you got for each answer. I'll also go over, after the test, the answers for each test question, and I'll post that as a private YouTube video for you to watch. But first, Time for a break to write propane. And remember, propane is CH3, CH2, CH3. Propane. Hey, I can even write propane in red. Oop, didn't go out. Hold on. Let's try it now. CH3, CH2. CH3, and you don't have to write this down. And that again is propane. And the final grades will be online, the computer system of the college, and also I'll be putting your final grades and all your totals in D2L. Now, the withdrawal policy, I have nothing to do with that. That's all through the registration center, but I do wanna tell you, not handing in labs, not taking the test, and not taking the final does not officially withdraw you from this class. If you do that, whatever points you have, I'll determine your percentage and give a grade. Unfortunately, over the number of years, I've had students who never drop. Now, I'm required to put the midterm grade uh, date right here and the last day to drop. Now, I can tell you after water break, that I rarely have students drop. One, when we are face-to-face, -face, if they move out of the area, they drop. I've had some students who have gotten pregnant and they have dropped. And since we've been on um, Zoom, I've had students drop, unfortunately, who
who come down with very bad cases of COVID. But usually students don't drop my class. Now, because of the health problems and COVID is starting to pick up again, I do give incompletes. And if it's a medical emergency or a personal emergency, as long as there's some documentation, you can get an incomplete. Now, before I go over to the tentative course outline, it's time to look at propane again. And propane is CH3, CH2, CH3. In organic chemistry, we don't use empirical formulas that much which would be three carbons, eight hydrogen. This is the empirical formula for propane, and we don't use this. We use the structure like this. And in my videos the first week, yeah, I'll be teaching you how to draw those, which is an important part of this class. But that's propane. Remember, that's the gas used in the white bottles for a barbecue, gas barbecue. All right, now here's the course, a uh, tentative course outline. And I have for each week, what chapters and what learning modules. Now the learning modules can be found in D2L. And let's take a look. You go to D2L, scroll down. Let me make sure that's what you're seeing and you are. you'll see CHEM 170 learning modules. And here are the different learning modules. And I have in the syllabus what modules you should be looking at for each week. Let's look at module one. And you'll see I have an overview, objectives, outcomes, your learning resource, presentations, which I have in my syllabus, activities, and the completion deadline. And that's also in, and each one of these modules are both as a PDF file and a Word file. And that's in black, a D2L. Now, if you notice this week, you should be doing modules one and part of modules two. There's overlap throughout the semester. And you'll see in week four on Wednesday, that's when I'll be giving at 8 a.m., sending out the password, usually a couple hours before Tuesday night, I'll put in the assignment area the test, but you can't open it up or download it. I think you may be able to download, it, I'm not sure without the password that I'll send out Wednesday morning. The Monday before, or maybe I'll change that. Yeah, the Monday before, I will do a live review on Zoom. I'll also record it and post it in my YouTube channel. And here it is for the whole semester. If you notice the whole last week here, I'll spend the whole week doing reviews. And that's another reason why my students do well on my final, because I do a whole week of review for the final. Now, because this class this semester will be totally online, asynchronous, other than my office hours and the reviews for tests one, two, three, and four, everything else you'll look at the videos and the files in D2L. And what I've created here is the schedule of what videos you should watch. And here I have the UL, URL and the title. And that covers module one and two. And if we look at this, You'll see back from 
by the way, if you look at the title, it's year, month, day, and also which week is this. And this is from last fall I'm picking. And if you click on it, the Republican team. Let's start from the beginning. Welcome to exciting semester of Chem 170, Organic Chemistry, with your host, me, Dr. White. Who is that handsome guy? Me. Back then, I was, because uh, I was drinking a lot of tea, I don't drink as much to cut down the caffeine, but you'll see me drinking my tea often. All right. And these are the videos. Now, I also have a link to the actual YouTube channel. And if you notice, I have 243 videos. Oh, that's the number of semesters since I think 2020 that I've been on Zoom. And you can go back and watch other semesters too. And you'll see my week one in fall and spring are pretty similar. Now I should watch you, well, not watch, but remind you that the summer, it's a seven week course. So like here, let's find a summer. Here, like here, 2022-07-20, you'll see it only goes up to week seven because the summer, the last two semesters has only been a seven week as opposed to ours, which is 16 in fall and also winter, or they call it spring semester. So right here, you will have what videos you should be watching. I highly, highly recommend keep up. Don't fall behind. That way you'll get a good grade. Now, we'll also be doing lab, since organic chemistry labs really can't be done in a home situation. It'd be very dangerous. I have the labs that I created for Chem 170, and let me explain. First of all, time out for propane and propane. is CH3, CH2, CH3. And that's the, for, the structure of propane, the molecule used for barbecues. That's what you burn, called combustion, to make the heat that cooks your food. We'll talk more about that later in the semester, probably this week, not that later. But anyways, I meant to say, when I, inherited, started teaching Chem 170, the course had, how should I put this very politely, awful, awful labs. Now, one problem with Chem 170 and ECC, the labs when we're face-to-face -face are only an hour, 50 minutes. How that got started, I don't know. And other schools, and I've taught at COD, the equivalent course, the lab is two hours and 50 minutes. Most of the lab, like almost all the lab books written for one semester organic, like Chem 170, the labs are about two to two and a half hours long. Well, if I have an hour 50 minute lab, I can't have a two or two and a half hour lab because some students when we were face to face had a course, the other class they had to get to after my lab. Well, if you can't use the textbooks and the labs I got were awful, I challenged myself being an organic chemist, can I come up with my own labs that are fun to do and educational? And I did. And what you'll be doing this semester is you'll be downloading either as a Word document or a PDF file the labs that you would be doing 
if we were face to face. The only difference is in those labs, I have put the data that you would collect if we were face to face, but you still have to learn the material in the labs, analyze the data and use the same thought process that if we were face to face to answer the questions. So good news, you don't have to buy a lab book. Speaking about, let me. Oh, look, it's time to talk about propane. And remember, propane is CH3, CH2, CH3. And that's the structure of propane. In a little while, I'll explain why I've been doing this. All right, let's get back to the lab. And you'll have 13 labs, and I'll take the top 12. Now, how do you get your points? Each lab is 11 points, and you have to hand it in by creating a PDF file with your answers. Now, if you don't hand in a lab, you'll get zero points. You'll lose two points if it's late. Now, labs are due the next week after the lab. I talk, day I talk about it. In each of the videos on Wednesdays, the second video of the week, near the end, I go through all the information you need to know how we were face to face to do the lab and understand what's going on in the lab so you can answer the questions. Now, if you're more than eight days late, and you have a week after I talk about it to get it uploaded, you get zero points. Labs are easy points to get the way I grade, but you have to hand them in. A problem I've seen since I've been online is some students don't hand in a lot of the labs. Keep up, they're not that hard. If you have any questions doing the lab, answering the questions, Guess what? In my class, there's no such thing as a dumb question. So if you need help with the labs, come to my office hours or see me on Zoom. I will help you. I do that when I'm face to face too with students. And here's the lab schedule. The first two weeks, like the first two weeks we were face to face, we don't have lab. The first week, we never have lab. The second week, we have what's called the safety video and check-in. But since you're not going to be at ECC, we don't have to do that. Week three, the first lab will be melting points of organic chemists, compounds. Now, at the very end, I have what's called the student agreement, which I also call the student signature sheet. And let me show you an actual one that you can download right here as both a Word document and a PDF file. Now, this is a contract that I learned about this when I started teaching at ECC that many faculty use and I use and have used for many years now. And what you have to do is print your name and this is a contract. And the contract is you've read the syllabus early and understand the policies for this class and that you understand it's your responsibility to abide by these policies and that you understand failure to abide by these policies will result in the consequences outlined in the syllabus. And I need you to sign it and date it besides printing your name here. If you have not uploaded a signed signature sheet or agreement by test one, you'll get a zero for test one. But you've got a number of weeks to do that. It's right now in the assignment area of D2L. And let's do propane one more time. Propane. is CH3, CH2, CH3, propane. 
Now, why have I been doing this? I go like this and ask you, can you close your eyes and see the structure of propane? Close your eyes. Were you able to see CH3, CH2, CH3? I bet many of you were. And why am I doing this? Because in organic chemistry, my class and any other introductory organic chemistry, there's a lot of memorization. There's no way for me to sugarcoat it. There's a lot of memorization. Now, a lot of students have used flashcards. They don't work that well for most of my students. What does work well, when you have to memorize like the structure of propane, write it down five times and say it each time, which is what I've been doing. And if you wanna learn, say, butane, which you will have to, and that's the liquid in the lighters, that's a different structure, you know, those little lighters with the liquid in it. This is butane. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. If you want to memorize that, write it again on a piece of paper, butane, and write the structure. And if you do that five times, I've done it once, twice. If you do it five more times and a day or two later repeat that, you will memorize the structure of butane, which is something you'll need to do for my class. Now, years ago, after test number one, I had these two students who are very close friends, real good friends. And they came up to me together after class one day and one of the students did really well, got a high A. The other one, well, she didn't do that well. And both of them were women, so I can say she. And the second one asked, Dr. White, what can I do differently or to get a better grade on your test? And I asked her, the things you have to memorize, did you write five times on a sheet of paper and say it out loud? Or if you're in the library, say it silently in your brain. And she said, no, that's a lot of work. And her friend who got the A said, yeah, but I, I did that and I got an A. And the other student got the message and she did that, started doing that. And in test two, she did a lot better, really a lot better. So you have to put the work in. Now, another area that will help you You look in the content area of D2L, scroll down, you'll see practice problems. If we click there, you'll see the alkanes problem set. I have it both as a Word document and a PDF and the other area problem sets which relate to the different chapters this semester. Now, if you look underneath here, in the, uh, what do they call this, the index? I don't really call it that, but the index, I have practice problem answers. And here there's PDF file. And because I had to scan them, it's easier than using the software I use to draw structures faster. So I do it by hand. And here are the answers. Now, First of all, when you do the practice problems, don't look at the answer. Say, oh, that's how you do it. Do the practice problems. Now, first of all, after test number one, you'll understand why I call them practice problems. You really will. Now, the other reason that I'm gonna explain is if you were alive, and maybe some of you weren't, or maybe you were very young, back about 1995, when Michael Jordan played for the Chicago Bulls. And at that time, he was the best of the best of the best. He was the very best player in the National Basketball Association, the NBA. And often you'd see in a newspaper or every once in a while on a TV, 
their sports reporter on a TV news show would have a article or uh, have a, uh, what would they call it, a piece where they talk about Michael Jordan. And a lot of them would be Michael Jordan, always the first on the practice court, always the last off. Wait a second. At that time, he was the best. Why was he practicing the hardest? Because that kept him the best. Now, another thing, how do you do good in this class? You do the practice problems. And you watch the videos, too. Now, how does that help you? Well, let's talk about bicycles. Bicycles? Yep, bicycles. Let's assume you don't know how to ride a bicycle. And being the nice person I am, which I am, I give you the best Blu-ray ever made on how to ride a bicycle. You have a large, big, high def TV. By the way, about a month and a half ago, I just got myself a 75 inch big one. I had a 55 and I splurged and got a bigger, better one. My 55 was about eight years old. Still very good, but I got a newer one, big. But you have one of those in a good Blu-ray uh, player. And you watch that video over and over again for next month. You do slow motion, you back it up, go slide by slide. By the end of the month, you know every frame on that Blu-ray of how to ride a bike. You've watched it. But what happens the first time you get on a bike? Boom, you fall off. And then you get on, you practice, you may fall off again. But eventually, you learn how to ride a bike. That happened to me when I was little. Boop, <laughs> I fell off. And I'm sure all of you did the first couple of times without training wheels. And the same thing is true in organic chemistry. If you don't practice and do the practice problems, what's going to happen on a test? Boop, you're going to fall off, meaning you're going to get a bad grade. But if you practice, then that's where you'll fall off. And when you take the test, you won't fall off and you'll do very good. So please do the practice problems. During my lectures in the video, I do practice problems where I do one, put up a problem, give students time to try it on their own. By the way, if you're watching the video, if you need more time, click on the pause button. And then I go through and show the students how to do that. But you still have to do it. Because if you just watch me do it on the videos, it's the same thing as the Blu-ray, How to Ride a Bicycle. If you don't do it by yourself, just like if you didn't try on a bicycle the first time you fall off, you'll do that on the test. And I don't want that to happen. Look at my list of things to talk about. All right, one of the things I've seen over the years is students who have test anxiety. They study hard, they do the practice problems, they sit down both face to face and even on, when they take it alone at home and they just get so anxious. And I'm a chemist, organic chemist, not a psychologist, but their brain just goes Whoop, and up. And originally long ago, I had one student the first time and I came up with a method. Uh, I've been blessed a lot of times under duress to be able to solve tough problems. And I did it for that student. And you'll, I'll send out later this week or beginning of next week, a link to a private video on my YouTube, how to eliminate test anxiety. And it works. Students who have gotten Ds and Cs and Fs on tests, who have test anxiety, when they master the method I created, and it's not hard to master, they go up to get A's and B's. You still got to study and do the practice, but that eliminates their test anxiety. In fact, one time a while ago at my doctor's office, a nurse came to me when I was there for a checkup and said, I know you teach well and you're a good teacher, by the way, at COD 
in 2010, I won Outstanding Faculty Year for teaching Chem 170, their version Fall 12. And my son, who's 10 years old, has problems taking quizzes and tests in school. He knows the material, but when he takes it, he doesn't do well. So I'd, I'd already uh, been teaching my method. So I said, bring him in and I'll teach the method. And so I can't bring him to my office. So right then and there, I taught her the method and she turned around and taught her son who was about 10 years old, the method. And later on, next time I went in there, I talked to her and she was very happy and thanked me because her son was now getting A's and B's because he no longer had test anxiety. I'll, again, I have a video that teaches that. If you have problems mastering it, come to my office hour or email me and I'll set up a Zoom meeting. And it's pretty easy to help students master that if they're having problems. Now, important thing, I'm assuming you've all had general chemistry. If not, you should know, and I'll never ask on a test, what's an atom? An atom is the smallest particle of an element that has all the properties of an element. You should also know what is a molecule. I'll never ask on a test what it is, but I'll use that term a lot in class for my videos. And a molecule are atoms held together by what we call chemical bonds. Example of a molecule, you know it's coming, propane. Now, in this class, we'll be talking about certain elements and you should know their chemical symbols. I'll never ask on a test what they are, but you should know hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Also, my most favorite element on the periodic table, carbon, then nitrogen, oxygen, then the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Oops, let's fix this up. Iodine, that's the symbols. And then some metals, nickel, platinum, and palladium. And that's my whole periodic table. Those are the elements we'll be talking about mainly this semester. There are other ones like gold, or krypton, all that, we don't use in organic chemistry, at least not in this class. All right. And you should know, I'll never ask on a test this, but you should know that. Now, let me talk about the math requirements for this class, because they're quite hard. First of all, you have to know how to add and subtract up the four, this four. Yep, like two plus two is four, or four minus one is three, add and subtract up to four. Next, you have to know how to count up to 10 through week 12 or 13, 14, and then up to 20. Yep, and you have to know which numbers from zero, one to 10 are larger and smaller than the other numbers. You have to know eight is larger than four, or six is greater than three. And that's all the math for my class. Back when I first face to face, I'll tell students, by the way, on my test, you're not allowed to use any calculators and they get all scared. And I said, no, you only have to know how to add up the subtract up to four and count up to 10 or 20 later in the semester and know what car, what numbers are smaller and larger from one to 10. Now, I have worked in the chemical industry. Let me hold on one sec. And part of the interesting thing 
was as a R&D manager, I was one of the few PhD chemists or any chemist, research chemist, that the companies I worked at, marketing and salespeople would ask me to come to their customers. Why? One, I helped them sell stuff. And what was the reason? Because unlike a salesman, a research chemist coming in talk to a client has credibility, total credibility that salesmen don't have at that level. And in fact, at one point, the research director, VP of research, came to me and said, you know, you got to only be on the road 25% of the time during a month, because one month, most of the month, I was out on the road. But because of that, I got to visit a lot of companies, their research centers and other areas of their company. One company, when I was at Axo Chemie, now called Axo Nobel, I got the, because the company I worked for made additives for gasoline, went to different petroleum companies and their research centers. And I found out that throughout the whole industry, the best gasoline is Shell and still is. Mobile is almost as good. Now, BP has been for many decades, and it used to be called standard. Now it's called BP for British Petroleum, is the worst gas. Unless it's an ultimate emergency, I will not put that in my vehicle. I have a Ford Explorer SUV, and I've had a number of them. I like them. And a couple of years ago, in the area around Gary, Indiana, and that area also in Illinois, the foundry there, not foundry, the uh, plant, BP plant there made gasoline that was so bad that it destroyed, and you can look it up in the online news clips of that time, about three to 4,000 car engines uh, <laughs> that they had to pay to get replaced. I will not buy BP. Now, if you go into a gas station, you'll see three different grades of gasoline. And you have the regular, the middle, and the premium. What's the difference? The octane number, which I'll talk about in a later video. And additives they add into the gasoline to help your car, like your car engine run better and stay clean. Now, Unless you have a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, I've been in both, but I don't own one. Boy, I'd like to have one, especially a Lamborghini uh, SUV or Ferrari SUV. Oh, that would be fun. But anyways, you can get by your car with a regular gas. Well, the one thing I do, and I've been doing it for many years, about four or five times a year, normally when I drive, I only let my gas go down to half. That's just a personal thing. But I let it go down to about three, four empty, and then I'll fill it up with the premium. I'll do it once or twice in a week. And by just on a couple times a year, putting in the best gasoline that helps clean out your engine. But the rest of the time I use regular. Now, I would like to share an interesting website I've been using for a long time. It's called Gas Buddy. And the URL is chicagogasprices.com. If you put in a zip code, like for Elgin area, ECC, you'll see the different uh, gas stations and their current prices. Like the shell here was six hours ago, 422. This one on McLean and Fleetwood is right next to ECC. And when I teach face to face, that's one of the ones I go. The marathon is also good right across the street from this shell. And you can see the prices vary anywhere from 219 or the Sam's Club at 395 all the way up to the Sitco at 449. And this will help you save money. I have, I live in the Schomburg area and sometimes ECC Elgin is cheaper like it is now. But if you look down here, this mobile, which I go to, and also this 
Um, whereas at Costco are much cheaper than the ones at Elgin. So this helps you learn what gas prices and where you go or where you live, and it can save you a lot of money. Now, the last thing I'd like to do right now is ask the question, why, do you, why should you learn organic chemistry? A good question. Let's think about that. Ooh, my hair and my beard, what's left of my hair, those are organic molecules. That's organic chemistry. So is my skin, my clothing, this cotton. That's organic molecules. The plastic here, my printer. Oh, by the way, that's a picture from my all-time favorite movie, Forbidden Planet. It's probably the best movie I've ever seen. I know every line by heart. I've seen it, watched it so many times. By the way, this is my office. That's my part of my flashlight collection. I'm a flashaholic. I have some really nice, like this one, high-end flashlights. This was made by probably the best flashlight maker in the world right now, Hank Wang, who's in China. He does it himself once in a while. He has a friend help him out. And this has a very sophisticated control and super bright. And I have others from Hank and other companies that some of them can, the light can shine something over a mile away. But, and I'm also a power user. Those are some uh, external hard drives, big one, 2018. 16 terabyte, yep, terabyte. But anyways, those are plastic, that's organic chemistry. I lost my train of thought almost. And why should you learn organic chemistry? Well, let's go even further. Your food is organic chemistry. And uh, companies have hijacked the word organic, meaning super pure, doesn't have certain things. But in reality, the molecules that make up all the food you eat Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and oils, which I'll teach you later this semester, are organic molecules. Also, the protein goes to make your muscles. Those are organic molecules. That's organic chemistry. So let's see. Why should you learn organic chemistry? Your food's organic chemistry. Your skin and hair, your muscles, your mostly your body, your body is organic chemistry. Your clothing is organic chemistry. So isn't it obvious why you should learn organic chemistry? It is because someone told you you have to take this class to get a grade, to get into a program like a nursing school or a college, and you need a good grade. Now, I'm not going to try and con convert you into becoming an organic chemist, but I will do this. This semester, by the end of the semester, my world of organic chemistry is your world of organic chemistry. You just don't know about it now, but by the end of the semester, you will. Because I've worked in the real world of organic chemistry and I live in it, I will not only teach you theoretical, but I'll talk about how things are, the certain aspects of organic chemistry are in your everyday life. And that makes it exciting and fun. Now, one last thing before I say goodbye. And I said, you'll learn a lot about me this semester. And that is I'm Jewish. And I speak not that well, but I do Yiddish. Yiddish is a Jewish language, which is a mixture of German and Hebrew. And my grandparents came from Russia, but they spoke Yiddish along with Russian and the by the time I was born, they were quite fluent in English, too. And probably one of the greatest pre ladies, persons I've ever known in my life was my mother's mother. My parents were very nice. But this woman, my grandmother, Bessie Greenman, Grandma Greenman, was probably one of the finest uh, people I've ever met in my life. And whenever we'd leave, we'd go over there on Sundays to visit her and my grandfather that one. We'd go other Sundays because my father worked during the week to my other grandparents were nice, but this Bessie was a superb person. 
she'd always say in Yiddish, Muidli, gain gazun. And gain gazun means go and help. And since the pandemic and since I've been on Zoom and also my communication, I always end with gain gazun, go and help. Be careful, COVID's coming up again. I still wear my mask about three or four weeks ago. I think I got my third booster shot, the Pfizer. Be careful out there, it's still there. And with that, I'll say gain gazun, goodbye. And I'll also, something I stole from Granny of the Beverly Hillbillies show, look on YouTube, you can see it. She would always do this and I do that. Goodbye now, see you. And don't forget, watch the videos, do the practice problems. You'll do good in my class. And remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Do you need help? Email me, come to my office hours or email me so we can set up a private Zoom meeting. And once again, I'll say, gang gazun, goodbye now. I stole that from Granny to Beverly Hillbillies. Goodbye, gang gazun.